So today I thought I'd do a quick comparison here of the Honda V919 A3G and the Cube i6. They're both very similar tablets. These are dual boot tablets with Android and Windows. And they have almost similar processors. The Cube on the left has the Atom Z3735F which has a maximum turbo speed of 1.8 GHz and the Cube has a turbo speed of 2.13 it has the Atom Z3736F in it now the difference between them, both of them uh, there's no real huge difference um, when you do benchmarks, okay, there's a bit of a difference when it's a single thread so single core, this one here will turbo a little bit higher giving you slightly better speeds, uh, benchmark results but honestly, when it comes to a multi-threaded benchmark or anything like that, they're both pretty much exactly the same. And the score difference between them with 3D Mark was almost next to nothing. So what I'll do first is have a quick look at the actual build quality of both of the units. I will, of course, compare this later to the Techlast X98 Air 3G, which is another third tablet. So in terms of build quality, uh, this is the Onda here. It has a little... Uh, uh, touch button down here which acts as a home button and there are also speaker grills at the bottom so that's different so that's copying the iPad Air micro USB port there and this does light up blue when you're charging and when you touch the screen in Android that always turns on uh, that actual home button here can be a bit of a problem sometimes when you're playing games, so you often you accidentally touch that. You can disable that in Android, there is a hack to do that, but I don't know how to do that in Windows, but there probably is another, maybe an app or something, an application to disable that. So this side you have, this is the microphone right here, you have a plastic volume up and down rocker, power on button. And the overall quality it's pretty average off the Honda. It does have a nice feel the metal back to it. And you will notice that it's quite easy to mark. I just don't I don't know where this has come up with a bit of a scratch there. And uh, the 3.5mm headphone jacks on the top. There are no other slots or anything. They're underneath this cover here, which I think is a bit of a a mistake really on Honda's part to do, to do this. They should have had a slot on the side here like Q and Techlast have. And I'll say why, because have a look at how this is kind of, it doesn't sit flush anymore. See how it springs out? Because it's actually spring-loaded contacts that I'll show you in just a minute. But if I push down, okay. But it pushes back out again. That's really poor and that only probably leads to 3G reception issues maybe. I have had a few connection problems with this model. So that's a bit tacky. Now I have got that pushed in properly, so you're thinking, oh, I haven't got it clipped in properly. Well, I'm pretty sure I have. And I'll just show you underneath. So we have the aerials you can see on the back there. And which aerial that is, if that's the wireless aerial or the uh, 3G, I don't know. Uh, both models have 3G. The Honda does not have GPS. So you can see here, we have the little spring-loaded contacts and there's the 5 megapixel camera on the rear so overall the, the book quality is pretty average uh, we have the SIM card and the micro SD so it's a micro SIM and this antenna here I can't say whether it's the wireless antenna but I think one of them is and I have had a few issues with that. So overall the build quality on the Honda is average. Uh, the screen is good. It doesn't have uh, that kind of matte kind of texture we have on the cube which I'll go over in just a minute when I get these tablets fired up. So I'll just put that clip back in there and show you now the how you insert that back in here. So what you do is just clip, clip it back in I'm going to do this off the camera because otherwise I can't see properly. So clip it in the bottom first and then in the top and it's still 
is not really sitting any better. Well, it's a little bit better actually this time around, but it does seem to spring out. It wants to push out. The other side's not too bad. So I'll put that in the background there. And now we'll focus on the Cube i6. So the Cube i6 has a different build. It comes in black, which is really nice to see. Um, I love having a device that's not white now for a change. So let's just go over the ports on it. So up the top we have the micro uh, USB port in. That's to charge and your data. And you can, of course, use an on-the-go, an adapter, as you call it. There's the 5 megapixel camera in the same position, just like the iPad Air. And the 35 millimeter jack. I can report that sound over this port on both of the devices does not have any background bars or hiss or anything like that. So that's really good. Uh, this top part here is plastic. So that is obviously for the reception of the antenna. There'll be an antenna behind here, which will be the Bluetooth... Uh, and the wireless and the GPS. This does have GPS, this unit. GLONASS support. Okay, and here we have the slots. So this is the micro SD card slot, which is really nicely done. And the micro SIM, which has a nice little tray that you can just pull out there. You put the SIM card in the correct way, slot that in, and you're happy. I found the SIM card slot on the under to be quite poor because I didn't really know which way to put it in correctly so I had to muck around with that a little bit to fiddle around there. Now the volume up and down rocker is made out of metal so that's nice. I not like the plastic on the under which is a lot more cheaper and overall the finish of the cube is very solid. There's no noises. It just feels a hell of a lot better in hand than the under. And on the bottom we have no ports whatsoever and on the so it's on the uh, right hand side there's the volume rock and volume up and the front facing cameras on both the devices are in the same location now what I forgot to do is just get my gauge here and just see which one is thicker I've got a feeling they're about the same so I'll just have a look now and measure this without hopefully scratching the tablet. So just looking at that, that is just almost about, that's about 8.8 8 millimeters around there. 8.8, .8. so that's the cube. And the Onda, let's have a look what the Onda is just a bit less, around 8 point, 8 point, two or so, 8.3 but that's really a minimal difference, you're not really going to notice that so overall in terms of build quality the cube is a definite winner there now I'll just fire them both on and see how long they take to start up, try and do this at the same time okay so the screen that one that first come on was the Wonder. Both should be booting into Windows. Okay, so and even though the logo came up, BIOS came up slower, the Cube won that test. Okay, so now comparing the screen, now both of them, um, are they set on maximum broken? I don't know. No, it's not. Okay. One thing I have noticed is the Cube seems to take a long time to charge. It seems to take a lot longer to charge than the Vionda, probably because the Vionda does have a smaller battery. Now this only has a, this has around a 6,000 uh, milliamp hour battery in it. And the Cube i6 has a 8,000. And the Tech Last, which isn't featured in this video, will be featured in another one, has an 8,500. Okay, so both screens are on maximum brightness. They're from here you can't, really see much of a difference there. I'll see if I can try and put the same white background up. If I just go, hang on, into touchscreen responsiveness on both of them is the same. It's really good. As I said, there's a big difference in battery life. Now there is a difference in the screens here where you can see maybe from here that the Onda seems to be a little bit brighter. Hoping you can pick that up in the camera. And you'll see here that the screen itself, this is the Onda. 
is nice and clear. You have a look at those logos there, if the camera will focus. They show up nice and clear. Now, I'm hoping you can pick this up in the video. If you have now a look at the cube, you'll see that it's got kind of a textured look to it. Well, I kind of like a matte finish, like the difference between a glossy and matte display on a computer. So the logo still look clear and everything, but it's not as clear. It's it's really it's hard to describe. It's like the difference between that grainy kind of look that a matte display has. It's as if Cube put a fine, I don't know, like a matte gloss layer over the top of the IPS panel. Why they did that, I don't know. So you can have a look. There is a difference there. It takes a little while to get used to. So that might bother some people. You can see, if you can see around here, there's kind of like a graininess to the white. It more sort of shows up on white colors for some reason. So lighter colors, it tends to show up. So that's something to consider when it comes to screens. I would say that the Onda has a slight advantage being slightly brighter and I do like the black levels and the contrast and the, the cleanness of the image compared to the Cube. I mean the Cube is really good as well but it's just got that kind of slight graininess to it. Alright now the other thing I wanted to test was how fast do they switch. So both of them have the same inside BIOS. It's the name of the uh, BIOS and it's a, a BIOS switching BIOS software that they're running on. So clicking both of these icons I should be able to just reboot now into Android, so I'll see how long that will take. Now I'll try and do this at the same time. I can't remember if the Onda has a... I think the Onda has a pop-up screen first, so we'll just have a look. Hopefully not, so I'll try and do that as quick as possible. So swapping over now. Oops, okay. Uh, that, I didn't see, I didn't time that very good. Now the ROM on the Cube is much lighter than the Onda. So it will be interesting to see, even though it seemed to reboot the start due to my delay there, I think. See which one pops up first. Okay, so the under one, partially my fault there, I think. So not really much between them there with booting, rebooting. Now what I'll try and do now is see how long they both take to go into to Windows. So there's different launchers, of course. The launcher on the Onda has a lot more bloat on it to start with. And the one on the Cube is more like a Nexus kind of experience, very stock. So what I'll do now is both of them have the slide down menu. I will just, you can see there's a difference in the DPI there, look how, how much bigger that is. The DPI set on the on the Cube is 320 and the Onda I think is 260. The Cube, you, I should really change that if I can later on. So what I'll do now is just do a quick, see if we can swap into Windows now and see which one's the quickest here. So I'll try and time this exactly the same time to touch them. Okay. So have a look and see which one's the fastest. See a little BIOS message that just popped up there on the cube. And the, the Onda's little uh, home button lights up. So it looks like to me that the Onda is going to win here, definitely. Mm, it's already on the Windows welcome screen. Okay, so not much of a difference there, but the Onda was slightly quicker. That could be down to the eMMC drive speeds. They're both around about the same. Uh, the Cube has a Toshiba drive in it, and the Onda has a Hiinx eMMC. Okay, so before I end this video, I just want to check the weights of them both. So I will just cut this video quickly uh, and just have a look now at the weight of them while I get the scales. So I've just got the scales here now with me and what I'll do is just 
weigh both of them, see which one's the heavier device. I'm gathering it's going to be the cube here, but we'll just have a look. Okay, so this is the under here, and that is exactly 500 grams. That is amazing that it's exactly 500 grams. <laughs> 500 grams that in ounces. Uh, let's have a look if I can quickly switch it to ounces, I think. So, okay, so wait, it's one pound 65. And back into grams, let's see what the weight of the Q by six is. 508 so that's not much in it I mean that's nothing it's like 8 grams it's you can't even distinguish that difference all right so that's just a quick comparison the differences the key differences there between the the Honda V919 and the Cube i6 one thing to consider also is there is a difference in storage size the Yonder you can get into 32 gigabytes and 64, and the Cube at the moment only in 32, so that's something to consider. I really personally think that if you're going to get a dual boot machine and you want to use both Android and Windows, then you should probably be looking towards 64 gigabytes minimum, really, for dual boot. Okay, so that's the video. Thank you for watching. If you did like it, please give me a like, that'll be helpful. And do subscribe for more videos on these Chinese tablets. Bye for now.